How would you define making it in the music industry with the rise of technology? Your music versus some of the other DJs out there. Some of the over-exaggeration when you see a guy on set. Try to imagine a crowd gathered under Leonardo at the Sistine Chapel. And this guy's like... <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> it does put things into perspective. My producer or my uh, project manager here is also a musician and, uh, and a music producer. And he had a question for his name's Elijah. Sure. And he just wanted to ask, how would you define making it in the music industry with the rise of technology? And then he goes on to say, pretty much anybody can make an album in their bedroom now. Well, <coughs> anyone could have for a long time. Really? I did. <clears throat> you know? Um, my, my first album was done on, um, uh, pre windows computer, uh, uh, on a, uh, what was called a tracker. It's actually a software called impulse tracker and, and maybe another one called scream tracker. But the idea was that they were both very similar pieces of software. They ran in DOS and, um, you would load samples, uh, you know, into, you know, the computer and stuff like that. Whereas like, they were just like little wave files or you'd load them to the, the sound cards RAM, if you had any, which was a big deal back in the day. But, um, yeah. And then, you know, might not have been the best music I've ever made, but you know, it was something and it was, it was really cool. Uh, and, but that was done in a bedroom. Yeah. yeah. I think what, but he, I think, I think he's, he's getting like at. Grammy level, like high, big pop hit. I think he's just getting at stuff. all of the, he is, uh, how do I describe? He's kind of a traditionalist, maybe is what I'm saying. And, I, and I get you. And uh, and all these new tools and stuff are coming out where you really don't have to. It's. I'm just talking out of my ass. No, here, no, to be honest not. with you. But you're, you're bringing up a term called uh, ITB in the box, mm -hmm. so everything could be done on the computer. Whereas yeah. 20 years ago, yeah, sure, everything could be done on the computer. But generally, the musician would have a mixing console, a synthesizer, a reel to reel, uh, an a, a ADAT for recording. You know, it required some gear if yeah. you took it seriously. But but all that gear now has been just programmed into software that could just be done on on a computer screen and that's it so yeah that's that's i think that's what he means by that yeah so i mean you we had kind of spoken last night about it we're gonna go back to childhood but i'm jumping around here but um sure. we, we'd kind of talked about it last night about some of the about your music versus some of the other djs out there and some of the some of the over exaggeration when you see a guy on set. Uh, okay, well that's that's like kind of two different arenas. I I feel I don't know. Um and and I've been harping on it and I'm sure it's all very readable and look upable. But like a DJ traditionally, right? This is like it's it's like it's like talking about shit you shouldn't talk about because you you're always gonna bum somebody out. And I and I I don't I I've always like. I don't waste too much time thinking about it, but I've always tried to think of this like totally Geneva answer for what a DJ is. You know what I mean? Because they like, I'm like, okay. And it's like fundamental. A DJ plays music, right? And he's mm -hmm. a, he's a human iPod. And then with all due respect, you get dudes like mix master Mike and, uh, you know, uh, Qbert and, and, and DJs who are like technical scratch DJs who play on whatever. And they're like, no, this is like an art or kid koala, right. Who's made an entire album out of turntablism and stuff like that. And they're like, okay, yes, also a DJ, but that's different. You know what I mean? And then, and then a DJ who uses controllers and no traditional DJ equipment, also DJing, you know what I mean? But, Doing it live. There's a guy right now who's absolutely destroying everything. Uh, this guy called Fred again. And he does a lot of, you know, pad whacking and stuff like that. And, you know, is he making an album up there? Well, he could, you know, pr pr make to a degree. You know what I mean? But he's doing a lot of sampling. He's doing a lot of, like, you know, cutting and stuff like that. And that's another thing. But you could also say, oh, he's DJing. 
you know, playing back some elements of pre-recorded material. You know what I mean? So that there's your answer. There's like eight fucking hundred ways to skin the the DJ cat, right? And I think now, at least the last like ten years, people have gotten smarter to know that he's not up there like just like a jazz musician creating original music for you on the fly. Yeah. I'm so glad that era is gone, you know, because when electronic music became, you know, more and more popular and um, producers were producing music, but then they're like, well, what are we, how are we going to do this on stage? You know, because this, me in the studio is like listening to the same fucking loop for like fucking 30 hours straight back to back trying to fine tune shit. You know what I mean? That is not something you could sit through and have a great time to, you know, like it's, it's annoying, you know, it's, but it's work, you know, it's like, yeah. it's like a painter, you know, like you can watch like a painter, like, like a finger painter guy, like uh, what's his name? Uh, you see I, Gar Garbaldi or whatever. And he, he, he does these like really quick halftime during a sporting event kind of finger painting of an artist. And it's like, boom, it's done. That's entertaining because he, he can do it in like five minutes and, yeah. and have a really cool thing. Right. But if you're, you know, try to imagine a crowd gathered under Leonardo at the Sistine Chapel. And this guy's like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it does put things into perspective. I'm just saying, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's it's all about the methodology and the delivery of, you know, um good and short or amazing and you know, high effort. Yeah. So thank you. Let's <laughs> let's let's go back to childhood now. Okay. So we we were talking about how you got into computers, programming, a little bit of hacking. Yeah. How did music come into play where did the inspiration come from well it, i i think it was it wasn't music fell in um because i like i think i was i was decided around you know when i was like eight or nine i'm like i don't care what i do when i'm older as long as it involves a little computer you know what i mean i'll be a graphics designer i'll be a programmer i'll be a I don't give a shit. I'll be a little hacker. I don't. I don't know. You know what I mean. So, but but I just I want to be at this computer. I want to be hunched over, and unhealthy in my forties. <laughs> so, um, I that's what I wanted to do. But then you know, like I'm thinking, okay, well, like I I started hobbying music myself, like researching what little resource I had. I I had to go to the public library to read up on like digital audio. You know, because again, like. There was an internet, there was BBSs, and there was Archie and Gopher and all that stuff too, but very limited on how to make a club banger, you know what I mean? Like, they, no, it just didn't even exist. So I had to find people, you know, that, that did that kind of thing. Because there were electronic musicians back there were <laughs> before me, you know, and, uh, and, and, and while who? I was interested in it. Who, who, was, who was before uh, you? Tears for Fears. They were electronic. Nine Inch Nails were doing stuff um, okay. very early, um, like when they were Ten Thousand Homo Maniacs, that kind of that that era and, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, ministry, all that early um, industrial stuff. Uh, Skinny Puppy. I, I, I actually leaned more towards I, I dude. Club music wasn't even on my radar. Like the no oops, kidding. Oops. Oh fuck. Oh no. It was all early industrial stuff. Like my dad. Bought that. Remember that Columbia House deal where you buy like eight CDs for a penny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah. come so, in the magazines. Yeah, I was, uh, I was one of those kids. So um, me too. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes, so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.